Greetings to all. My name is Uzma Amir Jilani. I have started a series of short lectures on common medical topics to help medical and related field students. In this video, I will talk about cough. The learning objectives of today's talk will be uh, that the students should be able to describe the mechanism of cough and identify specific and non-specific causes of cough depending upon the presence of associated symptoms and list the common causes of cough and briefly learn about the management. Cough reflex is, an, uh, is a physiological mechanism. It is a protective reflex and it is initiated by the irritation of the bronchial mucosa causing bronchoconstriction which is the narrowing of the airway passages. This in turn stimulates cuff receptors. It is a very useful physiological mechanism and it serves to clear the respiratory passages of any foreign material and excessive secretions present in the respiratory tract. It is a complex reflex mechanism involving the central and peripheral nervous system as well as the smooth muscles of the bronchial tree. Cuff receptors are a specialized type of stretch receptors located in the tracheobronchial passages. And cuff is marked by a forceful release of air from the lungs. There is a sudden involuntary uh, reflex mechanism which produces cough. The steps of this reflex mechanisms can be described as the first step is that there is stimulation of the mechano or chemoreceptors present in the throat, respiratory passages up to the smallest bronchioles in the lungs. Afferent impulses from these cuff receptors reaches the cuff center which lies in the medulla which is part of brain. From medulla oblongata from the cuff receptors lying in the medulla oblongata efferent impulses or motor impulses via parasympathetic and motor nerves reaches to the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles and abdominal muscles. Increased contraction of these muscles results in noisy expiration which, which is called cough. Moving on to the types of cough. Cough can, can be uh, classified according to the the duration of cough and on the presence of sputum. It may be acute if it lasts less than 3 weeks or chronic in cases when it lasts more than 8 weeks. It may be unproductive or dry when there is no production of sputum associated with cough or it may be productive, productive when it is associated with the secretion of purulent or mucoid secretions which is called sputum. There are many causes of cough and it is not only the respiratory system which, uh, which is associated with the symptom of cough but it may occur due to the involvement of other body systems such as cough may occur due to uh, some heart problems like heart failure can cause cough due to back pooling of blood in the lungs. The lung function is uh, defective or the lung function lung uh, tissue is not performing its function and hence results in cough gastrointestinal problems uh, usually the gastric acid reflux into the pharyngeal mucosa causes irritation and may be associated with cough but most of the causes of cough are related to the respiratory disorders. These disorders may include the infections, the neoplastic diseases of the lungs or the traumatic diseases of the lungs, allergic causes, allergic problems of the lungs and so on. 
how to diagnose a case of cough most of the cases of cough usually acute ones they spontaneously um, cured by simple remedial measures but sometimes in chronic cases or when cough is associated with copious amounts of sputum a diagnostic uh, approach is required there are battery of tests which we use for the diagnosis of cough the first test is spirometry which we can perform in the clinic this test is used to assess how well the lungs work by measuring how much air is inhaled and how much air is exhaled and how quickly that occurs spirometry is used to diagnose asthma chronic chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and other conditions that affect breathing we can perform this test very simply in the clinic the second most important diagnostic tool is chest x-ray which gives a clear picture of the lung fields as well as the heart and we can easily diagnose many disorders of lung or heart by just looking at an at a chest x-ray whether it is a foreign body or any consolidation in lung any uh, solid lesion in the lung any cavity in the lung fluids in the lung enlargement of the heart or any other condition we can easily find out in the chest x-ray the third laboratory test which helps us in diagnosing a case of cough is sputum analysis we can analyze the sputum in the laboratory by microscopic examination as well as by performing culture and sensitivity tests by microscopic examination we can find out any malignant cells in the sputum or any bacteria in the sputum or any other abnormal feature found in the sputum whereas by culture we can culture different types of bacteria and come to a conclusion then that whether this cough is because of some chronic specific infection or just a viral infection or uh, allergic condition depending upon the diagnosis uh, we manage the the different types of cough if we go by etiology uh, the upper and lower respiratory tract infections causing cough are usually treated by appropriate antibiotics cough caused by smoking and chronic bronchitis are usually uh, cured by cessation of smoking and for any specific infection again appropriate antibiotics will help pulmonary tuberculosis this chronic infection can causes cough and it is treated by specific antibiotics for a longer period of time asthmatic cough is treated by inhalation of beta 2 agonists um, the most common is salbutamol and sometimes in chronic severe cases we need some steroid inhal inhalational agents as well there are certain non specific treatments of cough as well um, just to relieve some of uh, the dry cough cases such as antitussives or pharyngeal demulsions and in cases of uh, productive cough we have expectorants mucolytics antihistamines etc briefly i will go through the mechanism of these uh, remedial measures anti tussives which are also known as cough suppressants they suppress cough and produces symptomatic relief they mainly suppress cough center in the medulla expectorants these are uh, these are again also uh, work as a symptomatic relief and they act peripherally 
in they increase bronchial secretion or decrease its viscosity and hence facilitate its removal by coughing thus clearing the air passages mucolytics they break down the mucus liquefy the viscous tracheobronchial secretions and hence makes its removal easy antihistamines they are usually added to antitussives and expectorant formulations the main mechanism is that they reduce the secretion of mu mucus they are more suitable for allergic cough but not for asthma bronchodilators as the name suggest they dilate the bronchial airways the bronchospasm which is caused by the stimulation of the irritant is relieved by the use of bronchodilators they are mostly used in asthmatic cough pharyngeal demulcents they are the soothing agents they soothe the throat just uh, like some of the lozenges cough drops glycerin and honey uh, they act they provide symptomatic relief in dry cough arising from the throat so this is the brief uh, introduction to the topic of cough thank you so much for watching the video and if you have any questions you can ask in the comments